What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward. And you even mentioned it yourself, you were going crazy on Twitter. Like, crazy. One of the things that you did to me that stood out the most, and like you were one of my favorite followers when you were going ape shit on Twitter and Instagram. And one of the things that I absolutely loved that you did was when you would do the location. Yeah. And the location was whoever you had just dropped off that night. Yeah. And one that really stood out to me, because people, people look at the NBA today and they, they tend to forget like how stuff has turned over. And at that time, Andre Drummond was a starting center in the NBA. He was an all-star center in the NBA. Um, Y'all were in the same conference. And you're just now starting to make your name. Yeah. And you put Andre Drummond's head, and then your, your caption was like, I own real estate in your head for free, or something like that you said. like, And I'm like, yo, this dude is out of his mind. And then that kind of started this... this this like this beef amongst you and Andre Drummond. Well, by the way, I by must the way, say, by the way, it wasn't a beef. I, I was always, you know, that's you know, you, we were on the same team and all that stuff. But I always kicked his ass. Like he, he never, <laughs> had, he never had any chance. Like, like <laughs> never had any chance. <laughs> hey, so check this though: when he decided that he was going to come to your team. I was kind of like, huh? And then I saw the video. <laughs> then I saw the video of him arriving at the arena, at the facility once he signed. And you kind of turned and shook him up and kind of went back to what. And I was just thinking to myself, like, what is going through his head right now? Are, are, is he really feeling like I own this man right now? Like, you just came to back me. What was going through your... I, I have to know. Oh, I, I need to know what was going through your head when he decided he was going to sign with y'all. I mean, the reality is it helped his career because he's revitalized his career and backing mm -hmm. you up and now going to Brooklyn and, and he's playing incredible basketball in Brooklyn. So it worked. But what were you thinking? <laughs> well, I, I said this thing. So I, I, think, I think most of the time, like, you know... I talk trash or in the past when I use when I used to like really go at it with you know anybody whether it was white side or drum or whoever um, you know I, to me like it has never been you know serious to the point where like I don't hate anybody like I'm like I'm doing this for fun like if Absolutely. people get their feelings hurt. That is on them. Like that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> anything that I say and anything that I do, I literally I'm not I'm not I'm not kidding. So let's say whenever I'm about to send a tweet, before I even send a tweet, I'm in my kitchen or my living room just <laughs> dying because I know that people are gonna go crazy, whether they're gonna take it seriously or whether they're gonna think that it's funny. I'm already so done. And then when I send a tweet, I'm like, yo, I'm like crying because I'm like, that's what people love or whatever. But at that time, like, I was like, when he signed with us, I was happy because I'm like, yo, like when you look at you know the previous years, like you know, every single time that I went off the floor, we always lost leads. You look at game seven against Toronto when we lost that series. Uh, I played, you know, 40, what, 46 minutes, uh, 46 minutes. We were, what, plus three or whatever when I was on the floor. And then in the two minutes that I sat, we were minus 10. So, like, mm -hmm. to me, in my mind, I was like, when we signed him, I was like, I just need, like, a competing, like, someone who's not going to come off the, who's not going to come on the floor and just lose leads. So, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, it fits, you know, what we need. And, you know, I was fine with it. But, you know, if you're looking at, if you're looking at the video that you were talking about, it was really nothing. I was just... <laughs> you know, walking out, I was lifting, doing my thing, and I greeted him. I said, you know, welcome to Philly. But then again, you know, in my mind, I, I could never forget, you know, the old days, you know, when I yeah. used to go out there. Uh, I remember posting that video of him dancing after I gave him, like, <laughs> that was after the game. So 
about that story. So we go before that game, we go to Detroit. Uh, I had like, we lost that game, but I had like 30 and 10. Uh, and then he ended up getting ejected or whatever. But after the game, he was talking crazy. He's like, that man is out of shape. He can't run. I'm like, like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, no, you just won, but I just had 30 on you and I'm out of shape. Watch one, watch what I'm about to do t- uh, to you. So I'm like, the next meeting was a couple of weeks later. I'm like, you don't know what's coming. So in that next meeting, I had like 32 in the first half. I was going at him. He was in fire trouble. I was going. I was like, but I had 32 in the first half. I was like killing him. We was up by a lot and all that stuff. That's what I remember. You texted me after the video that I, that I posted. You were like, yo, you crazy. And then like, crazy, like, yo. That's what I do. Like I had a location like crazy, like, you know, like I own a lot of real estate and all that stuff. But that's me. Like he, for me, it's fun. Like he's never yeah, like. Absolutely. He's never like serious where to the point where I'm like, I hate this man. Like, I don't want to be around this man. Like, I'm like, I never take it personal. Like, I'm like, well, he stays on the court and that's it. After we get off the court, if you want to, you know, talk to me or whatever, unless you say something disrespectful to me, other than that, like, I would never be disrespectful to anybody, whether it's, you know, going overboard and all that stuff. So I know where to draw the line. But other than that, like it's it's funny to me. Like I just I just go with the vibe, man. I just I just love it. That's incredible, man. I I um I I appreciate that about you because I'm the same way. I I talk a bunch of junk. It's never personal. Uh, like, you know, you playing basketball. Personal. It was personal when you were talking to Paul Pierce. That was personal. No, that that actually was like right off the top of the dome, man. Because I'm gonna tell you what happened. I'm gonna tell you what happened with that. So we're playing, and at that time, Doc is obviously with the Clippers. And yeah. we're playing, and, you know, for us coming up, like, you know, the NBA going way. So the Clippers, when we were really young, the Clippers were supposed to be the next team out the West. You know, like, they were the next young guys coming. And we like, hold on. We don't really believe in them. We got something to say about this. And so it kind of... You know, this, this rivalry started budding against two young teams, us against them, Steph against CP. And, like, at that time, Blake is the guy. You know, like, Blake is like, hey, they, they trying, they hyping Blake. Yeah, he's the next face of the league. Exactly. And, and, and I'm like, I'm, like I'm, I'm clamping that. Like, I ain't feeling that. And so then, you know, me and Blake had our situations. We had one where we had half court. He grabbed my side, I elbowed him in the throat, I get kicked out the game, he go back in the game, Bogey got him a second tech, he got kicked out. And like all of this stuff keep happening every time we play them, right? Yeah. And, and so then Pierce come over to the team at towards the end of his career, last two years I think or whatever it was. And now me and Blake Griffin already got a thing, like it's a thing. Yeah. And Pierce yells from the bench, Go at him, BG. He too little. Go at him, BG. He too little. He can't guard you. And so I'm like, fuck out of here. Go back down the court, whatever. We come back down. They go at me again. Go at him, BG. He can't guard you. He's too small. So now I'm like, amp, right? And he like, shot fake. I go flying, trying to beat the shit. And I fouled him. And I'm like, Number one, why am I going for a Blake Griffin pump fake? Yeah. Like, Blake shoot the ball now, but at that time, Blake wasn't shooting the ball like that. And so I'm like, why am I even going for a Blake So now I'm fuming because I just picked up a foul on a pump fake I had no business going for. And I really went for this pump fake because you over there talking. And, like, I'm trying to beat this shot so I can say something to you. And I fouled, and I got really pissed, like, Wow, you just made me foul him. So I'm walking back to the bench. and he, I mean, I'm walking to the free throw line. And he like, yeah, BG, I told you he can't guard you. And I'm like, all right, bro, I had enough. And that's why I'm like, hey, bro, you, you chasing this farewell tour. Like, you're not Kobe. Like, why are you doing this? If you retiring, if you, if you retiring, go home. Like, ain't nobody doing no farewell tour for you and like, 
making this whole, like, Kobe different, bro. Like, that's Kobe. 